Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? When times are tough and the government is confronted with the profound conflict of individual freedom versus the power of the state, can it simply ignore the Constitution? Tonight, freedom, the Constitution, and you. When we were colonists of the King of England, our economy was doing quite well. Many of the most successful business entrepreneurs actually came here in order to start businesses free from the regulations and taxes that had been imposed upon them in Great Britain. Soon the King and his ministers realized how well our forefathers were doing here, so they persuaded Parliament to begin to tax the colonists and to regulate them. Many industries here were sending tax dollars there, and eventually the British ministers in England were telling businessmen in the colonies how how and with whom to do business. Everyone remembers the battle cry that the pamphleteers and editorial writers of the day used so effectively. Taxation without representation is tyranny. So we fought a revolution. We won the revolution. We wrote a constitution. And in the constitution, the framers wrote safeguards to assure that the new government here could not do to Americans what the British king and the parliament had done to the colonists. British soldiers had author were authorized to write their own search warrants, for example. So the framers prohibited that in the Fourth Amendment, which states that only judges can issue search warrants, and they may only do so when the government presents evidence to them of a crime. Well, that hasn't worked out because the Patriot Act lets federal agents write their own search warrants. The Constitution protects businesses by prohibiting states from interfering with voluntary contracts between businesses and consumers. Well, that hasn't worked out because the states today tax almost every voluntary exchange we have. In some states, almost a dollar of what you pay for a gallon of gas goes to the government. The Fifth Amendment prohibits the government from taking property without paying for it, just as the king and the parliament had done. Well, that too hasn't worked out as planned because the feds take property from us almost every day. It's called income taxes. I think you get the point of this. The whole purpose of the Constitution was to assure that the government would respect individual liberty, that power would be separated between the states and the federal government, and the government would remain within the confines of the Constitution. Throughout history, the government has openly mocked the Constitution. Lincoln claimed he could violate parts of it in order to preserve other parts. Wilson said that somehow it gave him the power to tell folks how to live. FDR actually wrote laws himself and had them enforced, even though the Constitution only permits Congress to write laws. George W. Bush signed laws into existence and in the act of signing them said he never intended to enforce them. Yesterday, President Obama signed an executive order claiming the right to incarcerate persons in the Guantanamo Bay military prison for the rest of their natural lives, even after acquittal. After acquittal, yes, you heard that correctly. Following upon what President Bush proclaimed, President Obama claimed the power to punish people even after a jury has found them not guilty. No Western government has ever claimed the power to do this. Not the King of England, not Hitler, not Stalin, not even the Russian and Chinese communists. Now, I realize that most Americans have little sympathy for those incarcerated at Gitmo. Most assume that because they're there, they must be guilty of something. But that view turns the Constitution on its head. When he was a senator and running for president, Barack Obama knew that and stated that the beauty of the Constitution is that it guarantees fairness to everyone. He was right. But as president, he wants to lock people up forever, even after a jury finds them not guilty. Why should you care about this? Because if the government gets away with it by demonizing these prisoners and making it the popular thing to happen, it might happen to you. Tomorrow on Freedom Watch, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman.